覚えたのがこれだ<笑>ジャギ様から盗み取った北斗神拳北斗を味合わせてやるわ<笑>ハロー、皆さん、こんにちは。私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミドウェイ、そして、私はミド And then we'll also talk about individual talent setups that are really strong for specific bosses, as well as what legendaries really shine in what fights. But before we do that, please, if you are enjoying this already, drop a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And I'm also streaming on Twitch.tv slash MidwayEU, so if you are interested in watching me live pushing high keys or raid mythic, please go there and follow me. And now let's just get into the guide. Now, moving on to talking about talents, here we have the default build that you're going to be running for most bosses in the raid. However, there will be some very strong specific talent choices that will be made for specific bosses, and we'll talk about that later on in the boss analysis. Now, let's mention a little bit of each of the talent rows. On the first row, Light's Hammer will be the default auto pick because of the heavy AoE healing potential as well as add some damage. However, Bestow Faith is going to remain very competitive. It does give some holy power, it can be used instantly and on the move, so it will be very strong in some fights. Crusader's Might nowadays is a dead talent since the nerfs in 9.1. Now, moving on to the next row, Light's uh, Adjustment of Light Summary will be the default pick here. It adds a lot of extra healing at no extra GCD costs, and it's just going to do so much more healing than the other options here, so it's basically an insta pick. The level 30 row, the CC row, is going to be not very meaningful in the raid in particular, and it will depend on the bosses, but more often than not, it's not going to be something that you really put too much thought into it. And then next up on the level 35 row, we have Rule of Law, which is going to be basically the default auto pick on this row. It's the only talent choice here that's going to give you some healing increase through the extra mastery value, as well as having the utility of increasing the range of your heals. All the other talent choices here are strong as well, but they are very utility based and will depend heavily on the fight. Unless it is really required, you will always pick Rule of Law here. Now, moving on to the 40 and 45 rows, Divine Purpose and Awakening are going to be the main source of extra healing coming from, uh, from your talent choices, as well as Bestow, uh, Beacon of Faith. But Divine Purpose will feed a lot into Awakening, and Awakening will feed a lot into getting more wings. So these two talents are basically the slot machine part of all the Paladin. Divine Purpose will give you more uses of uh, Word of Glory or Light of Dawn. And you want to be using more Lights of Dawn in order to proc the 4 sets so you get more wings. And then more uses of Lights of Dawn can also deal, uh, lead to more procs of Awakening. So it's all fitting into getting more and more and more wings uptime overall. So those two challenge choices are the go-to pretty much anywhere. And they are really, really strong. Beacon of Faith is uh, going to be the default choice because we are playing Marats for the most part. And therefore, we are transferring the healing through uh, Marats or through using Light of the Martyr to our beacon targets and therefore our beacons are getting healed by so much more as well as now having uh, being able to stack up to 10 stacks of Marats together with the 2 set we'll talk about that later on the legendary section but it makes our healing transfer through beacon that much stronger Beacon of Virtue will also be very competitive in some fights because there's uh, some, some very, very specific scenarios where the bosses and the damage patterns are very favorable to using Beacon of Virtue, as well as also being very strong together with what I already said about Moraz. Uh, Glimmer of Light is nowadays pretty much dead. It cannot compete together with the other Beacon options because of uh, mainly the interaction with Moraz. Now, moving on to talking about legendaries, we already mentioned in the talent section that Marats is a really strong option, and the reason for that is because it's feeding its healing done through the beacons. Now, there's also an interaction with the two set when, when you consume the two set buff and you get the double cast of Light of Dawn, the stacks from the Marats conduit are going to go all the way up to 10 stacks instead of 5, and therefore your next Light of the Martyr is going to be hitting for 100% increased healing, meaning that if you're using it together with Wings, it's going to hit like a truck. It's almost going to be Alien Hands that's also going to transfer its healing through the beacons, making it so that if you're using something like Beacon of Virtue, it has a really high burst healing potential. 
Now, Shadow Breaker will also be used specifically in Halandrus, and the reason for that is because the room is just massive. And therefore, you want to make sure that you're always hitting five people with your Lights of Dawn. And Yushin Shadow Breaker does exactly that. It extends your range of Light of Dawn all the way to 40 yards, so you can freely aim your Lights of Dawn and not really have to worry too much about positioning when people are spread out very loosely. In, when it comes to damage, Mad Paragon is going to be your choice here. It's going to provide the most single target damage. Banger's Momentum that's being used in Mythic Plus, it's not going to be able to keep up in scenarios where there's not that much AoE clip. And Shock, Shock Barrier will still be an option, however, it will not compare when it comes to purely HPS with what Morats can do. Now, when it comes to raiding, the King of Soulbinds for Necolord Holy Paladins is going to be Plague Device or Marilith, and the reason for that is because it's going to provide a lot of very defensive traits, as well as some increased healing done through Volatile Solvent, and then it will increase our single damage done to one target through using Kevin. Now, let's go through the traits. First, as I mentioned, Volatile Solvent will give us some secondary stats when we consume corpses with Fleshcraft, and even if there is no corpses to consume in any given fight, it's still always going to give us 120 mastery just by keeping Fleshcraft on cooldown. Next up, we'll have Ooze Frictionless Coating, which is going to give us a shield for 50% of the max HP whenever we fall below 50% HP, and this can happen every 30 seconds, so overall it's going to amount to quite some meaningful amount of healing done. Next up, we have a Vanity option, which is just going to repair our armor, which is not really too, too important right now. But moving on, we have Ultimate Form, which will make us immune to CC and knockbacks anytime we use Fleshcraft and 3 seconds after we are done casting Fleshcraft. So it's going to come really handy in fights, for example, like Lihubim. Next up, we have Undulating Rubers, which is going to make us stagger any damage above 80% health. 5% uh, of that damage is going to be staggered over the next 5 seconds, so it's just going to act as a defensive barrier that's going to be very valuable in some scenarios. And last, there's going to be Kevin, which is going to come out anytime we use Bankreaser's Hammer, and it's going to increase the damage we deal to the target we use Bankreaser's Hammer on by 6%, and then it's also going to be applying some Absorb Shields to our allies. Moving on to talking about the conduits themselves, let's start with potency conduits. First, we're going to be using, of course, the Bankreaser's Hammer conduit. Righteous Might is going to increase the damage of Bankreaser's Hammer by a lot, 200%, as well as give us some sort of leech effect after we deal the damage with the Bankreaser's Hammer, so that is going to be very, very strong. We are, of course, going to be running with Untempered Dedication or the Marats Conduit. Whenever we're running with Marats, it's going to be basically required. And then the next uh, potency slot will be between Adaptive Armor Fragment or Enkindled Spirit. Either of those can be used, and usually it's leaning more towards Adaptive Armor Fragment in the amount of people that are using it. However, Enkindled Spirit is uh, pretty close in terms of healing, and it can actually pull ahead depending on your playstyle on or mainly in the amount of overheal that you are going to be doing uh, from those Light of Dawns that are going to be empowered after using the Voshion Aura. Now, moving on to the Endurance Conduits, we have Shielding Ward that's going to be a must because we're going to be using a lot of Ward of Glory, namely to proc the, the, the stacks of the buff that you get from using Vanquisher Shammer, so that's just going to be a lot of free healing you're going to get on yourself. And next up, there will be Condensed Animosphere. That it, nowadays, with the amount of total HP that we have, it's going to be outshining Golden Path in any scenario, especially because we are not using that much Consecration in raiding. And finally, for the Finesse Conduit, we are going to be using Lights Burning. Increasing the horse duration by 100% is just so valuable, mainly because it's the only real movement spin increase ability that we have. It's almost always going to outshine Echoing Blessings, especially here where we do not really need that much of uh, increasing the tank's movement speed, but if that's the case, you can always move ahead and uh, actually switch it for Echoing Blessings and then use those freedoms on the tank if it's necessary for any scenario. Now, when it comes to secondary stats, we want to be getting Haste first, then Mastery, then Versatility, and finally Critical Strike. Haste is going to be our best stat, and therefore we want to get as much of it as possible until we get to about 30%. At this point, we are hitting the Diminishing Returns point, and any more Haste we're getting is going to be reduced in value. Now, Mastery is going to come up next, and it's going to be our next best stat. It's going to give us the most HPS increase per point invested, and it's basically going to be doing the same as Versatility. It's just going to increase our healing done, in the case of Mastery, based on how close we are to the targets. So, in some fights, 
for example like Calandrus where the room is so big and we are not close enough to a lot of the targets we're hitting, the value of versatility will actually be bigger than the value of mastery and therefore we might want to be switching around those stats. Finally Critical Strike is now a little bit more valuable than before because of the nerf to Wings rank 3 which is no longer a thing and therefore whenever we have Wings up we actually have 10% less Critical Strike than we used to do before 9.2. So next up, let's talk a little bit about gear. First, of course, tier sets, we just want to be getting as much uh, pieces uh, as possible. Basically getting the 4 set as quick as possible, because completing the 4 set is going to give us a very big power spike. Then we want to be making space for legendaries, of course. Marats is usually crafted on the ring, and then you can slot unity wherever you see best. In my case, I've slotted it on the pants because that's uh, the, the slot that really right now gives me the best amount of stats and I don't have anything that's that great on the pants slot. But that might depend on what your equipment is looking like. Some equipment slots are going to give you more stats than others. So you should look into that if you are really willing to recraft the, um, the legendary. Otherwise, just go for something like the chest or the pants depending on whatever tier set piece you have at that point. Now, when it comes to uh, trinkets, changing is going to be your go-to both for raiding and mythic plus, and you might want to be farming also the Solias trinket from Solias Gambit. However, there's a trinket from the raid that is very, very used. It's called the Elegy, and it is very strong. A lot of people are running it as well. But if you have any questions about gearing and about stats, you should definitely be checking external websites like, for example, questionoftheepic.com, which I usually check a lot when I need uh, to check and compare some of the gear. Or just go ahead and use WoW Analyzer and see what your stat values are, and then, or your, sorry, your stat weights, and then take any uh, choices or make any choices based on that. Now I want to do a little section on uh, gameplay and playstyle for Holy Paladin. Us, as any other spec in the game, are all about keeping spells on CD on our rotation and basically having a priority list of what we want to be pressing at what points. Our most important spell is going to be Holy Shock, and that's the first thing we want to always have on CD. Of course, it generates Holy Power and it does some free healing. And then we have Crusader Strike, which we never really want to be getting all the way to two stacks. We don't want it to be capping. We always want to keep it rolling and getting some new stacks generating. And that way, we're always getting the max Holy Power generation out of it. It's going to be very important to be agile in your Holy Power generation, as well as spending it properly and adequately. And then, of course, whipping in those Lights of the Martyr if you are playing Marats. It's going to be very important to get into the rhythm of using Light of Dawn, always Light of the Martyr right after. You don't want to be skipping over any Light of the Martyr procs. Now, Judgment will be a very important spell, and some people overlook it, but it's free healing and it's free damage. The healing that Judgment does through Judgment of Light, it's very important, and therefore you should always give it a big prio. Consecration won't be that big of a deal, especially in single target bosses, because the damage from it is not that big, and we're not even using Golden Path anymore, really, and therefore Consecration is kind of falling behind very much. Any other spells, really? Uh, Banquish or Summer, even though it's got a short CD, should be thought about as a cooldown and always used together with Wings as much as possible. 2 set versus 4 set, uh, how do you play around those? You could track the 2 set like I'm doing and therefore sometimes you will have the 2 set up and therefore going for um, a free or going for a World of Glory randomly just to keep that stuff on CD might be a good idea but that's maybe stressing it too much in some scenarios. It's fine with just using uh, ham Banquisher's Hammer whenever you feel like it, ideally always with Wings as I said and therefore just proccing it passively through using Words of Glory on people here and there. The 4 set is going to be used naturally in this case, don't have to stress about it as in Mythic Plus, it's just going to be randomly giving you wings, and more often than not you're just going to be using wings on CD, unless you really know that you need them in a couple seconds, you basically get one set of wings every minute, even less if you get lucky, a little bit more if you don't get lucky, but yeah, basically about one wings per minute, that's what you should be aiming for. And uh, I'm pretty much covering the entire base of the kit, uh, any other questions please? Um, let me know and of course you can always watch me play live on uh, on Twitch or follow my other videos and see any gameplay you might want to check out there. But that's going to be it for this section. Alright, so now we're going to be moving on to the section of the video where we're going to be talking about all the different bosses in the raid in Heroic and Mythic. And we're going to be looking at what percentage of the players are playing Necrolord, Benthyr or Kyrian. I'd be very surprised if I find any Night Fae. 
And the way we're doing that is by looking at what the percentage of people uh, on those top 100 logs are running um, each of the Unity legendaries. So that way you can know if they are using uh, a different covenant. Um, sometimes it doesn't add up all the way to 100 players because some people might just not be running Unity or maybe because of a problem in Warcraft logs. But let's start with Vigilant Guardian on Heroic. First here we have 59 Necrolords, 26 Kyrians and 10 Benthyrs on the top 100 logs for this boss. And on the top 10, there is 8 Necrolords, 1 Kyrian, and 1 Benthyr. Now, on Mythic, there is 82 Necrolords, so even more of those. Then we only have 3 Kyrians, and there is 14 Benthyrs. The top 10 is full on 10 Necrolords. All of these Necrolord players are running with Myroleth, the Soulbind. They're all playing Marats, and there seems to be a prefer uh, preference towards running with Beacon of Light, that is Double Beacon. So most people are running the standard talent build that we talked about already. However, there seems to be quite a use for Beacon of Virtue in this first boss. Especially on the top 10 logs of Mythic, there is quite some people running Beacon of Virtue. I'm pretty sure that is because of the bursting nature of the fight. And uh, during that time where you are inside the shields of those adds, Beacon of Virtue might really come to shine. But everything seems to be pretty standard on this first boss. And, of course, most people are always going to be running, uh, playing Necrolord in almost all the bosses, in uh, pretty much all the bosses in this raid. Now, moving on to talk about Skolex. On Heroic, there are 79 Necrolords, there are 17 Kyrians, and there is 4 Benthyrs only. The top 10 is all 10 Necrolords. And on Mythic, there is 88 Necrolords, only 3 Kyrians, and only 8 Benthyrs. Top 10 is also 10 Necrolords. Now, for the most part, everybody is running with Marats and they're running the standard talent setup. Uh, on Mythic, everybody is running with Double Beacon on the top 10. However, on Heroic, some people are running with Beer 2 on the top 10 logs. Now, one curious thing about this is that the top log on Mythic, this person is running with Shadowbreakers, uh, with Shadowbreaker and Storm Marats. But I do believe this is a mistake. Looking at the breakdown of their healing, this person was still using a lot of Light of the Martyr. I do believe they forgot they didn't switch the Legendary somehow. Um, however, uh, yeah, I still do believe that Shadowbreaker, even if this log is really good, is really not the play here. There is a case to be made with a lot of mastery value, um, with the increased uh, value of mastery uh, coming from Shadowbreaker, but I do not really think this is a play, I just do think this is a mistake, because usually you'd rather play um, Marats, which would lead to a much higher increase of overall throughput normally. Um, Shadowbreaker here would just be misused because the increased range would never really come into play because you'd always be healing, uh, hitting the melee first anyways, so it really would never be going all the way towards range. However, this player might have, do, might have been doing something with uh, turning around and targeting the range preferably because they were lacking some sort of healing. That could be the case. I do still believe that Marats is heavily to play here. However, there is something to look at here. It's uh, an interesting lock to look at because it's really one of a kind. On Artificer Shymox, we see a lot of more of the same. On Heroic, we have 74 Necrolords, we have 19 Kyrians, and we have only 7 Benthyrs. Top 10 is 10 Necrolords. And Mythic, it is 89 Necrolords, it is 7 Kyrians, and it's only 4 Benthyrs. Top 10, it's 9 Necrolords and 1 Kyrian. Now, Shymox is a fight where I think Ashen has a pretty strong value during those intermissions when there's a lot of adds. Not only does allow to do a lot of damage on the adds, but it's also perfectly fit for that type of healing. Pulsating AoE that ramps up and lasts for quite a bit. Now, I don't really know how this fight is played nowadays, but we used to stop DPS in this phase so we could get cooldowns back up uh, when we were going into the second platform after the first intermission. And in that case, Ashen there was very valuable because the long time that we were staying on that intermission meant a lot of AoE damage was being taken. And the Necrolord there, well, was really not able to do the same amount of HPS. But it seems like Overall, Necrolord is heavily the play when it comes to parsing. You're still going to be getting a lot more wings uptime and therefore, over the course of the fight, be able to output heavier amounts of healing. Now, for every single Necrolord here, they're all running with Marats. And more of the same, people are running either Double Beacon or Beacon of Virtue. Uh, Beacon of Virtue is more heavily used and heroic than on Mythic, but it's still pretty much leaning majorly towards the Beacon, and about 30% of the people are running a Beacon of Virtue, so you can go with either of those and seems to be just fine. 
Now, when it comes to the son or sausage, whatever you want to call her, uh, that's a boss that I personally thought it was going to be much more heavily leaning towards uh, Benthyr, or rather there would be a lot more Benthyr representation, but that is not the case. Uh, I, I thought that because of the strategy that used to be the go-to for progress, and that was jumping over the halos with the shadows. It was going to make things a lot easier for most people, but now, for the sake of parsing, it seems that Necrolord is still the play here. On Heroic, there is 76 Necrolords, there is 20 Kyrians, and then there's 4 Benthyrs. On the top 10, we have 9 Necrolords and 1 Kyrian. However, on Mythic, there is 86 Necrolords, there is only 1 Kyrian, and there is uh, 13 Benthyrs. And the top 10 is again 9 Necrolords, but in this case, it is 1 Benthyr. Now, those Necrolords are all running with Marats, but there is quite a big split between running Double Beacon and running Beacon of Virtue. Especially on Heroic, Beacon of Virtue is pretty heavily used. I do assume that it is because of the bursty nature of the healing in this fight during the, the periods of uh, big AoE damage happening during the shield breaking phases. So in this case, um, it is advised to um, maybe use a double beacon in Mythic and maybe use Beacon of Virtue in Heroic for the sake of purely batting. In Prototype Panther, we get more of the same. We have a big bunch of Necrolords. However, the spread is a little bit more even, I would say. Heroic, we have 68 Necrolords, 20 Kyrians, and 12 Benthyrs. And the top 10 is 7 Necrolords, 2 Benthyrs, and 1 Kyrian. Whereas on Mythic, there is 78 Necrolords, there is 2 Kyrians, and there is 20 Benthyrs. The top 10 is 9 Necrolords and 1 Kyrian. So as you can see, on Mythic, there is quite a heavy usage of Benthyrs, and that is because a lot of guilds are trying to burn on the last phase uh, with a heavy action on top of all the, uh, all the mobs at once. So you can just make the fight as short as possible and end it in the last phase as best as possible. As well as Benthyr being pretty strong if you manage to get all four stacks of the, 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 the flowers that you can burst with healing. And uh, a big action very empowered with wings and all those four uh, stacks of that buff can do a lot of healing. So Benthyr seems to be quite the play here. Now when it comes to Necrolords, they still are the overwhelming majority and they're taking most of the top 10 log spots. And they are all still playing with Marats. A bit of an even spread between Double Beacon and Beacon of Virtue. Whichever you prefer seems to go just fine. Now moving on to talking a little bit about Lihubim. This is the one of the bosses that I talked about where one talent is uh, outshining another one that's uh, basically not a talent onto the default build that we talked about. In this case, it is Beacon of Virtue being more powerful than Double Beacon especially on Mythic. Now on Mythic, in this boss, there is 100 Necrolord parses on the top 100 logs on Warcraft logs. And of course, the top 10 is all Necrolord. And most of these players are running with Beacon of Virtue because it just fits the damage profile of the ad windows where you have to DPS this ad before it spawns. Um, and the, the bursty nature of that damage, the pulsating AoE is just perfect for playing Beacon of Virtue. Now, this same thing happens on Heroic, but in this case, there is a little bit more of a spread out of Covenants. We have 78 Necrolords, 18 Kyrians, and 4 Benthyrs. And out of the top 10, 8 are Necrolord, 1 is Benthyr, and 1 is Kyrian. For the most part, those that are playing Necrolord are running with Beacon of Virtue. However, on Heroic, there's more people running with Double Beacon. In terms of Legendaries, it's still heavier. Uh, most people are running with, uh, with Marats. And uh, I don't mention anything about Soulbinds or Conduits because basically everybody is running with Marilith and everybody is running the same setup that I talked about on the default build. Basically everything that we mentioned there stands and applies to every single one of the bosses because there's not really much of a chance to swap to any other Soulbind and not many other Conduits can really be placed into almost any of these bosses. So I won't really be mentioning that unless it is uh, something uh, particularly of notice. Now let's move on to talk a little bit about Halondrus. This is one of the fights where the standard build is being deviated from. In this case, we're moving away from Lightshammer and choosing Bestow Faith instead in the first row. The reason for that is because of the intermission in this fight and the fact we're never really uh, stacking up properly. So Lightshammer never really gets to have any good uses. 
Um, during the intermissions, using Bestow Faith allows us to keep on generating Holy Power, doing some healing, and most importantly, doing it on the move with comfortable Insta spells. Um, now, we're also switching away from Morath in this fight, and instead we're using Shadow Breaker. The reason for that is because the room is massive, and we just want to make sure that we are always hitting five people with our lights at dawn. Shadow Breaker allows us just to do just that, we don't have to worry too much about where we are aiming our Lights of Dawn. And it also increases uh, some of our healing with some bonuses on Mastery. Um, now talking about numbers, on this fight on Heroic there is 74 Necolords, there is 20 Kyrians and there is 5 Venthyrs. The top 10 is 9 Necolords and 1 Kyrian. So Kyrian is quite well received in this fight. I do believe mainly because of people not really wanting to invest in Shadow Breaker for a one-off. Now, on Mythic, it is 96 Necrolords versus 2 Kyrians. It doesn't add up to 100 for some reason. And on the top 10, there is 9 Necrolords and 1 Kyrian. Uh, in terms of Double Beacon versus Beacon of Virtue, on Mythic, Double Beacon is much more favored. Uh, on Heroic, there is a bit more of a usage of Beacon of Virtue versus on Mythic. However, Double Beacon is still seems to be the play. On Mythic, there is a case to be made where using the beacons onto the bomb carriers, the people that are using the bombs and therefore taking damage from it, uh, might be preferable over using them on the tanks because the tank damage on this fight it is not that big. Now, Anduin is another fight where we are deviating from the standard build, and in this case, we are really favoring picking uh, Beacon of Virtue over Double Beacon. The reason for that is because of the barriers and the very bursty nature of the healing required to deal with them. Us, as uh, Necrolords, are able to have a lot of healing ready for these barriers, and if we have Beacon of Virtue, we can just pop it up, and we can have li uh, we can have Light's Hammer, we can have Wings, and we can have a bunch of stacks of Vanquisher's Hammer ready. We can all stack in there and the barrier, and really go ham with Beacon of Virtue, AoE healing that barrier down. It is also very good for the, the faces, the King's Morns, when you have to heal the Hopes. If you manage to dispel with a mass spell all the Hopes up, and you're lucky enough, you can land a bunch of Beacons of Virtue onto these Hopes, and if you are able to hit all four of the Hopes with a fat light at dawn you are almost going to be healing the entire set of hopes immediately with a fat light at dawn and a proc of a two set so it makes the fight very very smooth now let's look about uh, numbers on mythic 100 percent of the logs on the top 100 parsers are necklord and they're all playing with beacon of virtue and they're all playing with marats on Heroic, there is 86 Necrolords, 8 Kyrians, and 6 Venthyrs. The top 10 logs are all 10 Necrolords, and the 8 of those are playing with Beacon of Virtue. Two of them are actually playing with Double Beacon, but still heavily, heavily favoring playing with Be Beacon of Virtue. I heavily recommend actually picking Beacon of Virtue, and if you're not comfortable with it, it's a perfect fight to try and learn how to play it. I have a walkthrough of this fight in Mythic if you want to watch in my channel where I go over everything that I do and the thought process before, uh, when uh, approaching the different sets of mechanics. So if that's something you're interested in, you're just getting into Anduin or you just want to learn more about how to play with Beacon of Virtue in this fight, go ahead and check that out. And uh, yeah, that's it for this boss. Next up, Lords of Dread, another boss where Benthyr seems to have quite a spot, especially on Mythic, due to the bursting nature of the damage happening during the swarms. Now, uh, there is 83 Necrolords on Mythic and 17 Benthyrs. Due to this reason, there is no Kyrians whatsoever on Mythic. And on the top 10 for Mythic, there is 8 Necrolords and 2 Benthyrs. However, on Heroic, there is 86 Necrolords, 7 Kyrians, 7 Benthyr, but the top 10 locks are all Necrolords. I wouldn't really think that Ashid is necessary for the swarms. In fact, I think that it might actually overheal too much unless you are really cheesing the logs and underhealing that fight a lot. Uh, everybody here is playing Marats and all the soul and conduits are as you would expect. And the split between Beacon of Virtue and Devil Beacon seems to be pretty even. On Rhygalon, we see another overwhelming majority of uh, people running Necrolord on Mythic. There is 100 parses on the top 100 logs for uh, Mythic. Of course, the top 10 is 10 Necrolords, and they're all running with Morads, and they're all pretty much running a double beacon. Beacon of Virtue doesn't really seem to be the play here. Now, Rhygalon is a boss that has a lot of tank damage, and therefore, the value of double beacon is going to be very high. 
On Heroic there is 85 Necrolords, 9 Kyrians and 6 Venthyrs. The top 10 is 8 Necrolords and 2 Venthyrs. There's a little bit more of a split between a Double Beacon and a Beacon of Virtue, but again most people are running with Double Beacon. Now moving on to the Jailer, the final boss in the raid, we see that on Heroic there is 94 Necrolords versus 6 Kyrians, there is no Benthyrs, and on Mythic there is 100 Necrolord Parses. All the top 10s are for both Heroic and Mythic are 10 Necrolords, and everybody here is playing Marats. Beacon of Virtue seems to be more used in Mythic um, versus uh, Double Beacon. However, I do think that Double Beacon in this fight is uh, quite strong because the tank damage is very high. But now they're nerfing the melee damage from the boss, so that might not be the case anymore. But they are also nerfing a lot of other um, mechanics in this fight. So the overall damage that will happen in the fight will be lower, therefore locks will probably be lower as well regardless. On Heroic, there's less usage of Beacon of Virtue, more people are using Double Beacon instead. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this boss, and this is pretty much it for the entire boss analysis section of this video. Alright everybody, so with that we come to the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed it, hope you find it useful. If you got any further questions, please drop them in the comments, also let me know what you thought about the video. And uh, I'm also streaming on twitch.tv slash midwayeu, so if you want to watch me live or just come there, hang out and ask me any more questions, you can do so over there, so please follow me there. And uh, again, if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and subscribe, it really goes a long way for me in this channel. And uh, yeah, I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye, everybody!